Bwana Sifiwe. Praise the Lord. It is nice to be in the house of the Lord. There is no other place to be <laughs> than to be in the house of the Lord. And we are so glad that we are here this morning and also to have the opportunity to share um, the word of God and also to partake um, um, in the Holy Communion. I just want us to have a brief time to reflect on what we have done this morning. And then we will spend some time to pray. Because I believe it is prayer that is sustaining this nation. It is prayer that didn't allow us to kill ourselves. And it is prayer that will sustain us from not killing ourselves. And so I want us to spend some time to pray for ourselves and for our nation. I want to read God's word and then I will pray. We'll be reflecting on of Ephesians chapter 2. The whole chapter. But I'll focus my message on chapter 2 verses 11 um, to 18. And I'll read that test. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders by birth. You were called the uncircumcised ones by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from God's people, Israel, and you did not know the promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you belong to Christ Jesus. Though you once were far away from God, now you have been brought near to him because of the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has made peace between us Jews and you Gentiles by making us all one people. He has broken down the wall of hostility that used to separate us by his death. He ended the whole system of Jewish law that excluded the Gentiles. His purpose was to make peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new person from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. He has brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and to us Jews who were near. Now, all of us, both Jews and Gentiles, may come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you, Father, for what you have done for us. We have shared that this morning through your word that encourage us to remember your death and the benefits that those that brought to our lives. We thank you that as we reflect on these things, that this morning 
you will encourage our hearts and you will strengthen us in the inner man that we will live our lives to bring glory and honor to your holy name. We ask this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate together the Lord's table, or Holy Communion. It has been explained to us by the senior pastor why we must do this. In fact, it was Jesus who gave the instruction for us to do this in remembrance of him. The simple definition of the word remembrance uh, from the dictionary is an act of remembering something or the state of bearing in mind of something or the act of thinking about something again and an act of recalling to mind. And so this morning, I want us to do two things as we reflect on the passage that we have read. I would like us to think about again and to recall to mind what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. We demonstrated through the Holy Communion the exact thing he did. But these emblems have some significance for our life as believers. It is the fellowship of the Lord that brings us together as one people who have been redeemed by him through his blood on the cross when he died. And so I would like us to look at that and draw us some implications for our corporate life and as a family of God and also as a nation. I would like to base this brief reflection on Ephesians 2, verses 11 to 18, and will spend the rest of the time to pray as I have said. I want to first point out to us that the death of Christ on the cross has for us two benefits, spiritual benefit, but also it has for us some practical benefits as to how we can engage and live our lives. And I want to explore some of these benefits. The first thing I want to talk about is Christ's death gave humanity or uh, forgiveness from sin through his death on the cross. And Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10, speaks clearly about this. In fact, this book, chapter 2 of Ephesians, is one of the clearest teaching about salvation, about what God has done for us in Christ, that Apostle Paul wanted us to know. And I think as believers, this is very important for our lives. Christ has set us free from sin. His power, the world, from Satan who rules the world, and is working in those who rebel against the ways of the Lord. And I think this is very, very important and fundamental for us to understand. What we have done here this morning, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, symbolizes the effects and the way Christ has freed us from the enemy, the devil, sin, and the things that hold us captive so that we cannot do God's will. We have been freed from these things. And that is why we are not just ordinary people. We are people who have been empowered 
by God to live to honor him with our lives. Satan, we are told, is the one who works in the house of people to make them become disobedient to God's will and purposes. We are not under his influence. Christ has broken the link between us and Satan. Satan doesn't have any power over us any longer because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. But also, sin has no power over us any longer because of what Jesus has done for us. We stand free in his presence from sin because he has broken the power of sin over our lives. This is what Jesus Christ has done. And we have talked about it so many times when we were standing here this morning. That Jesus has forgiven us all our sins. He has forgiven us all our sins. And we don't bear those sins anymore. We don't carry them anymore. Having received God's rich mercy, love, and life, we should live and reflect our new position in Christ as those who are seated with him in the heavenly realms, focusing our attention on him and not on the world and the kingdoms of this world. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. That is where we are. That is where we stand. We live on this earth, but we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. That is where our activities must focus about the kingdom of God. Our passion, our desires, our goals in life must focus on heaven where we are seated with Christ. I know we live here on this earth and we have concerns about this earth. But as good Africans, we know that what controls what goes on here is from the spiritual realm. Heavens controls what goes on here. And if we fix ourselves in heaven, then what goes on here, we can control it. What goes here cannot control us. We must take a rightful place where we belong in the heavenly realms. And from there, direct control the affairs of this world. We must depart from all forms of evil as God's new creation in Christ. Do what is good and right according to God's word that God expects us to do. One of the things that excites me is that God's purpose and God's intention for us from the beginning and the foundations of this world was to do good works. That is what we are. That is God's design for us. God created us to do good works. And as his children, we definitely must reflect his character. He is good. 
He is good. And we cannot be bad. If we are bad, we are not him. We must be good because God is good. There is nothing evil in God. There is nothing bad about God. So nobody can speak badly about us. We must reflect who God is. He is good. He is good. Our heritage is to be good people, to do good works, and not to do what is wrong. We must align our passions, desires, and inclinations after the will and purposes of God. To do his will must be our one controlling desire and goal in life. That was the goal of Jesus' life on earth. Jesus said, my will My My purpose is to do the will of the one who sent me. Who sent me. Who sent me. The will of God must be our one priority as his children to fulfill his will. And I can guarantee you the will of God is not for us to be bad people. The will of God is not for us to kill one another. The will of God is not for us to hate one another. But the will of God is for us to live and love one another and to live at peace with one another and to live in unity with one another. That is the will of God. And this is what scripture is telling us this morning. Christ's death brought certain benefits for us. Number two, humanity has been brought close to God through the blood of Christ shed on the cross. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 to 13. As I read the scripture, you, you saw what was going on. It, it talks about Jews and Gentiles and how through their customs and cultures and things, they have become enemies. But God's intention for them and for us was not for them to be two people or two groups of people. God intended that they will be one man. And that's what the scripture is, one man, one man. The two will become one man, not two. One. What is God's will for us? God's will for us is for us to be one. When Jesus died on the cross, the goal was to make us one. That was the purpose. God, through Christ, brought us together. People who couldn't see eye to eye together. And we call each other names and make fun of each other. God's intention was that we will become one man in him, in Christ. The cross and the blood Christ shed has drastically changed our social relationships Because of who we are now in Christ, Christ has made it possible for us to relate with all humanity as people created in the image and loved by God. We share a common destiny in Christ. In Christ. The Bible tells us there is no difference. We we don't have any difference in Christ. 
We share common destiny. Christ has brought us together by destroying the enmity that separated us from each other. God's extension of love and mercy showed to us how we should treat each other and those who are different from us. Christ's death on the cross was not just an act of love. His death on the cross defines what love is. What we saw here today is a demonstration of what love is. What love is, is love gives itself out for somebody else. And Christ demonstrated that for us. His death models love. By his death, he taught us life laying down love for one another. Apostle John magnify or amplify this. He says this, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our, life, our lives for our brothers and sisters. I hope The weather is we lay down our lives, not our loves. <laughs> Love teaches us to lay down our love for others. Christ demonstrates. And what we saw this morning and experienced this morning is the result of that love. Can we lay down our lives for our brothers? Through his death and blood, we share a common heritage and we all have access to the Father by the same spirit. Our oneness and unity is grounded on the access we should have to the one Father through the one Spirit we all share. Apostle Paul emphasized this unity and oneness in his letter to the Corinthians. It's not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation of the blood of Christ and is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share in the one loaf. First Corinthians 10 16 to 17. We are one body. We have one loaf. Not two. One. And that is very, very significant. Our unity is something that God cherishes. And God protects and God ensures that we understand what his purpose for us is. To be one people. To be one. And not two. Not many. Humanity shares in the one body and the blood of Christ. And so, we share 
in the divine life of Christ. Amen. We share in his divine life. That is why we will have eternal life. <laughs> because Christ is eternal. And if we share his life, then we will live eternally. We will enjoy this great life of his. Let me quickly finish and look at the practical um, benefits. Humanity is reconciled to God and to one another through the death of Christ on the cross. Ephesians 2, 14 to 16, and then verses 19 to 21. Christ breaks down barriers, reconciling persons of all kinds so that none are strangers and aliens. In Christ's scheme, there is nobody who doesn't belong. There is nobody who is not important. We always say that at the feet of the cross, is, uh, the ground is level. We all have to be on that level ground. No big man, no small man. No one you could uh, <laughs> In Christ, we are brothers and sisters. That is who we are. We are brothers and sisters. We are all important and we all belong to the one family called God's family. How we live and treat each other is very, very important. I know we have families, natural family, and how we treat our brothers and sisters, we, we treat them nicely. Even if we have uh, sibling rivalry, it's rivalry, sibling. That's why we call it sibling rivalry. It doesn't go too far, unless that family is very crazy. If they are very crazy, then they will do crazy things. But if they are normal family, they fight after two minutes. Oh, hello, brother, how are you? They patch up. They don't make that thing divide them. Christ has made all humanity one in him. So there is no distinction between the different people, groups, and no group is better or superior to the other. This was Apostle Paul's main point in Ephesians chapter 2. The distinction doesn't make sense anymore because Christ has destroyed that distinction and he has made us one in him. He has made us one in him. Paul says in Romans, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. God is not a respecter of People groups. God loves all of us. And he doesn't make a distinction. I think Pastor, Pastor said. He doesn't make a distinction between. I will start with myself. And I can. And my other siblings who are here. 
the Luos and Luyas, we, are, we come from the same. They are a standard family <laughs> on this side of the world. <laughs> we are told we all came from the same, you know. We share similar names. And it's, it's interesting. It doesn't make distinction. And my children who call themselves Kikuyus and they have Kikuyu names. He doesn't make distinction. He doesn't. We are all one before him. And whoever calls on his name, he doesn't distinguish them. He doesn't say, oh, you are an account, so I won't listen to you. You are come people are too proud people. You think you know everything. No. Any account who will humble himself before God, he cries to God, God will answer him. He doesn't show favoritism. He loves all of us. Apostle Paul also says in Galatians, and, and I, I'm, I'm really interested in why Paul, in all his letters, he, he talks about this thing. He, he always talks about this. Before God, we are all equal. In Galatians, he actually extends this. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, nor neither slave nor free. There is neither male or female, for you are all one in Christ. Hey, God doesn't, God is not gender sensitive. <laughs> It doesn't make any difference whether you are a male or a female. We are all his children. So we, we, we better stop making these distinctions. You are male, you are female, you can't do that, you can't do that. You are male, you can't do that, you can't do that. And most of these are not what God tells us to do. They are our cultural We have all become temple of Christ and a dwelling place of God. That's what we are. So the two benefits that comes from this reconciliation thing are very critical for us. The first is peace. Peace. The second one is unity. Christ, we are told from the scripture we have read that he is our peace. And he is the one who has brought peace between these two enemies who didn't see eye to eye. He is our peace. Christ is the author of peace. And he is the one who makes peace stands and possible. Without him, there would never be peace. But when Christ comes into our relationships, he destroys all the things that make us strife against each other and he brings peace into our lives. I pray and trust that we will cherish this work of Christ for his body. That he has brought peace to us. And he wants us to maintain and uphold this peace. (laughs) 
Apostle Paul admonishes us in Ephesians, this same book, make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace. With peace. Keep yourself together. Unite together by the Spirit. Binding yourself together with peace. There is one body and one Spirit. Just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, and through all is in all. That is the theology of our unity. We only have one Father, not two. Your father and my father are not different. We have one. Moja two. One. That is why we are brothers and sisters. We have the same father. We have the same faith. We have the same Lord. And this same person is the one who causes his blessings to fall on all of us. And he doesn't make distinctions. In conclusion, we must appropriate these benefits of Christ's death on the cross for our lives. And especially seek to maintain the peace and unity we have in Christ. And pray for our country and our church so we can enjoy the blessings of God and the blessings of each other within the family of God. May the Lord bless all of us as we seek to do his will, to live in peace and in unity. Pastor, please, come on. Amen. Let's appreciate Professor Nkansa for that powerful sharing this morning. Amen, amen. I'm going to hold you only for five more minutes. We want to spend some time in prayer congregation this morning in response to God's word. Amen. Let's be upstanding in the presence of the Lord as we go before the Lord. Prof has touched on many key issues in our lives. I wonder if you're here, you're still under the dominion of darkness. Sin is reigning in your body. You're troubled, you're a captive of sin, there's no peace in your inner being. The Prince of Peace is in the house. He longs to reconcile you back to himself. Hallelujah. That's the first call I'm going to make for those who need the peace of God. Who need the Prince of Peace in their hearts this morning. The Bible says there's no peace for the wicked. They're like a restless sea. Waves of the ocean tossed back and forth by all manner of things. But Christ, the Prince of Peace, wants to give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I want to pray for you this morning. If you need the Lord Jesus Christ and you need him this morning, you're saying, I want to be born again. I need Jesus just walk over here. Let's pray together. 
that you may be born again, that you be reconciled to Christ. This morning, just make your way here. I want to pray for you as well. Maybe you're also here, you're born again, but you don't seem to have peace. Perhaps the ongoing things around you have infiltrated your spirit, your heart, and your, your heavy laid, and your, you, you, you're not whole, you're not together. You're anxious, you're troubled. Make your way here. Let's pray together that God will set you free from all fears and anxieties this morning that you may have the peace of God in your life. But for the rest of us, I want us to pray by the help of the Lord that we maintain unity. Hallelujah. Perhaps the political environment has infiltrated into our ranks, into our fellowships, into our families. And perhaps there's no peace, there's agitation, there's people are not seeing eye to eye just because of political happenings and an outcome of an illegal process. It seems to have taken the center stage. We are reminded that our citizenship is not here, my brother, my sister. It is in heaven, hallelujah. Today we can stand in the gap and bring heaven into our experiences, into our lives, into our ongoing in this nation. In Jesus' name, we are called to stand in the gap and know that heaven calls the shots. Let's go before the Lord. If you need prayer, just walk over here. I'm not going to press on any further. If you need prayer, you're troubled, you need the Lord to touch your heart. Maybe you're worried about something. Something has happened. May not even be election related, but there's an issue. There's a situation you're going in. You're troubled. You're anxious. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has given us his peace that surpasses all understanding. Come and claim the peace of God in your life. Let that be your benefit today. Be set free from every anxiety, from every fear, from from every worry, from every depressive situation. In Jesus' name, walk over here. Let's pray together. If you need the Prince of Peace in your life, you want to be born again, walk over here. Let's pray together. And the rest of us, let's go before the Lord in prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you find yourself in that spectrum, call upon the name of the Lord. He's an ever-present help in time of need. He, he guarantees us His peace in Jesus' name, not as the world gives but the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, whatever it is that has robbed you, the peace of God, come and claim it in Jesus' name. Peace is your portion because you're a child of God. You're a child of God. Claim that peace in your life. Claim that peace in your family. Claim that peace even in your spirit and in your heart this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, Prince of Peace. You have brought peace. You've broken down everything that separated us and alienated us from Christ. And you brought us peace in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for those who need the peace of God in their hearts, who needs reconciliation, Lord. Today, let every wall be broken down in the name of Jesus. Let every separation, let everything that sets us away from God be broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the chain of sin will be broken in Jesus' name. The power of Satan will be broken in the lives of your people in Jesus' mighty name. That the devil will not hold anyone captive. Today we claim freedom. We claim freedom. We claim freedom. We claim freedom for Christ has set us free. In Jesus' name, from every dominion of sin, you need freedom. You need deliverance from the dominion of sin. Maybe you're a habitual sin. You're bound by sinful habits. Today, you can be set free. In Jesus' name, there is power through the blood of Jesus. There is power through the cross of Christ. To set you free today. Don't go away a captive. Don't go away to the same situation. Ensnaring situation. Freedom is not a strange thing. You can experience it today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord we worship you. There is power in your house today to set every captive free in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every chain of sin be broken. Let every chain of sin be broken. Let every chain of sin be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. 
Oh, hallelujah for your precious blood. Hallelujah for walls that are breaking this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. For bondages that are breaking this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you, we praise you, we magnify your name. Oh God, for those who need salvation today, we pray that their eyes will be open, oh God. Their eyes will be open in the name of Jesus. We rebuke every spiritual blindness in the name of Jesus. Every veil the enemy has put, that they cannot see the love of God, and they cannot see the goodness of the Lord. Today we declare those chains broken in the name of Jesus. Oh God of glory, oh God of glory, oh God of glory, freedom in your house today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for those disturbed by one thing or the other. Oh God of glory, today we declare shalom, today we declare the shalom of God, today we declare wholes, wholeness in the name of Jesus. Oh let your peace like a river attend our way. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, whatever it is that has sucked us in, into the atmosphere we are in, oh God, into the political environment we are in, oh Lord, you've reminded us that our citizenship is in heaven. We are children of God. We are one in Christ. Hallelujah. There is no Nasa Christian. There is no Jubilee Christian. We are all children of God. In Jesus' name, politics will never divide us. We declare this morning, no political outfit will divide us. We declare that the blood of Jesus has cleansed us has drawn us nigh to you, Lord, and made us to be your children, Lord. We are one, Lord. We are united in Jesus' mighty name. We refuse to be divided. We refuse to be divided along political lines, along political persuasion, along political opinions against anything of this world in Jesus mighty name and right now we stand in the gap this morning for this nation as the body of Christ as people redeemed by the blood of Jesus we declare unity in Kenya in Jesus name we declare unity in the political class in Jesus name we declare unity in Kenya in the mighty name of Jesus oh God of glory let there be healing in our land. Let there be healing in our nation. In Jesus' name, in another electioneering season, oh God, we declare peace. We declare peace. The Prince of Peace rules and reigns. We refuse every divisive politics. We refuse every rhetoric that is prone to bring agitation and bloodshed. We silence that voice. In Jesus' name, we declare the Prince of Peace is holding this nation together. Jehovah reigns. In Jesus' name, Almighty God, you reign over Kenya. We declare unity. We declare peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We declare Kenya is one in Jesus' name. Kenya is one in Jesus' name. Kenya is one in Jesus' name. Arise in our nation, we pray. Arise in our nation, we pray this morning. Be honored, be glorified, and be exalted, oh God. Touch our politicians, touch the president, Lord. Touch the right honorable Raila Odinga, Lord. Touch him today, Jehovah God. Touch his troops, oh God. Touch all this political class in the name of Jesus. Give them a house of reconciliation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they will not dig in their heels in the name of Jesus for a battle, but they will know this nation belongs to God. It does not belong to an individual. It does not belong to any party. In Jesus' name, this is a nation that belongs to Christ. We speak the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus. We speak the blood of Jesus. Our nation is redeemed. We declare redemption. Come on, speak redemption. Speak reconciliation to this nation in the name of Jesus. We speak reconciliation where there's been words of division, words of hatred, words that stirs up a tribal emotions. We silence that voice in Jesus' name. We speak reconciliation. We speak peace over Nairobi. We speak peace over every county in this nation. We speak oneness in the name of Jesus. Another election will come and pass. 
the man you want for state house will go to state house in Jesus name whoever it is oh lord we do not know but you know and we declare in the meantime in the in political time oh god of electioneering we declare the peace of god rule and reign oh god we declare heaven is firmly in control over this nation you rule and you reign in the mighty name of jesus thank you prince of peace for your peace thank you this morning lord for your peace and the unity you've given us through the blood of Jesus, we declare his world with Kenya. We speak blessings upon the nation. We speak the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit over Kenya. Kenya is cut out for greatness. Kenya shall be a great nation in Jesus' name. The fear of God will be upon this nation in Jesus' name. You rule and reign over this nation, and Kenya will know prosperity. And the peace of God. Thank you that your hand has been upon us and you carry us through even this period in Jesus' name. Amen. And give the Lord a round of applause this morning. Amen. Is there anyone who came to be born again this morning? You came to dedicate your heart to the Lord among the people who came forward. Anyone who came to be born again? He said, I want Jesus in my heart. Anyone like that? You came to give your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. Is there anyone like that at the altar? Or even if you didn't come forward, anyone like that? For me, that's the greatest miracle of the day. <laughs> to be born again. Hallelujah. Anyone like that? We want to pray for you. All right. If you didn't summon enough courage after the benediction, please walk over here. Let's pray together. Amen. 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 Congregation, as you leave the house of the Lord this morning into a new week. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May he grant you his peace, his abiding presence, and victory throughout this new month. God bless you. You're released. Have a blessed week. Amen.